Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Power Platform Boost podcast. I'm here, Nick Dolman, with my co-host, Ilka Ackerbeck. Oh, I screwed that up. <laughs> no, no, thumbs up. Great. Okay. And we're broadcasting today from, of course, Arrakis in Norway, and I'm actually in South Africa right now, um, going home today. So a little Why bit different. Why are you in South Africa? Why am I in South Africa? I was competing in the International Powerlifting Federation World Bench Press Championship, Woo! where very unsuspectingly and surprisingly, I won the bronze medal in my age and weight class. Woo, woo, woo. So, and then we're going to put on the sound that says, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and I know the clapping is not very good on a podcast. I'm going to do the, this is better. The click. I've heard the click. click okay. Click. Great cool. job. I'm so proud of you. Thank oh, you. Amazing. So move him into the bronze medal position. Temporarily. And I think he's got it there. He has three whites, so he'll slide into the bronze medal position for the moment. So it's been a lot of fun, but I'm ready to go home. <laughs> so I'm going home later, starting the journey later today. And that's going to be about 30 hour trip till I'm back home. But I'm, it was fun. It's good. But we're not yeah. here to talk about the, the bench, the world bench press championship. Although I could talk about an hour on that. Maybe I should start another podcast on powerlifting. Um, yeah. But we're here to talk about something else was going on last week while I was, picking up stuff and putting it down again. What was what was going on? So uh, in other parts of the world, we had our week filled with Build, the developer conference, the highlight of the year, I would say, for Microsoft developers all over the world. Uh, it was both virtual and um, in Seattle, right, uh, this year? Yep. Yeah, in person? Yep. Um, and Obviously, I followed it from uh, Norway. The timing, the time zone uh, was completely off for me. So everything happened during the afternoon and night. So I didn't follow anything uh, right live. But I had the pleasure of uh, waking up in the morning and being able to back play everything that had been recorded. Um, so uh, it's impossible to talk about Build this year without talking about co-pilot people. So we're sorry. I know you're co-pilot fatigued already. Um, but we're going to go through the highlights, um, our picks from Build, and especially looking at the Power Platform. And it is impossible to get through that without saying Copilot. So please, you know, pull out your your um, bullshit bingo sheets <laughs> and feel free to cross out. You'll get Copilot bingo before the end of this episode, I'm sure. But, but there is other stuff as well beyond Copilot, and we'll definitely talk about that. But it would be impossible for us to talk about every little thing. And I know a lot of people, it's like a shotgun effect of information. And I realized this week for like, for me not being online uh, and working and, you know, kind of just keeping an eye on Twitter and LinkedIn and just seeing all these announcements come from all over the place. And of course I was, you know, before I left, I was helping get some of that documentation and stuff ready for it as well, realizing focused in my area. So, uh, Oreka, you had a good point about if you want to know everything that's happened and where it's all very well consolidated was the book of news. Do you want to chat about that for a minute? Yeah, sure. So I've, uh, stay, I've tried. So the book of news is a compiled summary of all the announcements made at Build. And I've tried to come, you know, read through it. Uh, other, you know, it comes out once a year. And I haven't been able to really get through it because it's been so extensive. I think this year they made a brilliant book of news. I had it, you know, I spent a couple of hours while the guys were 
watching football last night and I was on my phone able to read through it. It was so to the point and consists concise and it you know really gave me a uh, very good insights into what this build is actually all about so if you want to get into the news and you want to know that you've seen everything i think that is one of the points of that book of news as well that you know i have seen everything i have an overview there's nothing that is lost on me um, in terms of the announcements that are made but if you want to get that summary I think we have links to this in the show notes as well. There was one, um, let me just see if I can find those uh, uh, notes. No, I can't. Um, there was an article made by one of the communications officers at Microsoft that actually just, he wrote such a brilliant article that summarized and put everything in perspective and kind of gave you that feeling of what Microsoft ha have thought about while putting together a build. And I think that is also giving some insights into the ideas behind the the news and announcements that we that we see. It's not just you know putting everything that's new out there. There's a cohesive story and the reason why these announcements are coming now, and then this order and why we're seeing so many efforts within Copilot, for instance, and and other things that we'll talk about later. But I just really recommend you going through that, just read that article first to get that, you know, idea and story behind it, and then re read through Book of News. It's a really good read. Cool. And when you say football, you mean soccer, right? I mean football. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, soccer, whatever. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm not even in North America right now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And still, yeah. No, but I know. Uh, yeah, it's football. Actually, so we're so we're, we're a Manchester United family, and we won last night as well. So it was a. I had book of news open, and then we won, and then yeah, that's a good two hours spent. I think. <laughs> cool. So of course, All right, with, so let's dive into it, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah. the first thing we're going to cover, yeah, and like I said, we did talk about co-pilots in an episode a little bit earlier on. We're going to really just talk about the co-pilots as things that have been announced. Now, a lot of things were already announced earlier at the Microsoft Business Applications event. So some of this isn't new. I think what's changing is now these are being lit up in private preview. Now, the key thing is, you know, I think for most of these, you still need a US-based tenant. And then the other thing I read this morning is you need to make sure your browser is set to English US. Now, even with those things, there's a couple things that for me aren't still lighting up um, in my US tenant. So I'm just wondering just where they're at in the train right now. But these things should be lighting up for a lot of you very soon. Um, and of course, if you wanna try it out, make sure you, you can spin up a US-based developer environment and, and again, just make sure you do the proper browser adjustments and it should all work. Um, but if I'm sure other folks will probably give some information to make sure everybody who wants to try this stuff can try it out because it is preview. So it's not necessarily production. And then when we talk about co-pilots, there was one message that I did see, I think in uh, Stephen Siciano's blog, uh, and they called it like they've talked about describe it, design it. And I just want to drill down a little bit on that. And I think with these co-pilots, they're great. That's amazing technology, but you still need to know what it, you're doing when you're built using these co-pilots. It's, it's called co-pilot for a reason. It's not called pilot. It's not going to do the work for you. It's going to help you do your work. And you still need to know how to do your work. You need to know how a flow works. You need to know how a Canvas app is wired together. You need to know how a model-driven app is wired together. You need to know how Dataverse works. You need to know how to build a Power BI report. You need to know how to build a Power Pages site. Um, I'm sorry, it's not going to do it for you. It's going to help you. So that's my little <laughs> rant soapbox on Copilot. Um, like I said, great technology, but you still need to do a little bit of your homework to, to make sure that you're 100% sex, successful. So that being and it's, said, it's a good thing to remember as well. And that you see this in the demos and you see this in the way that it's constructed. It's not, so it's always you having hands on the wheel, right? So even it's, it's only going to give you suggestions, whether you push next and you push submit or publish or whatever, it's up to you, but it's, 
your decision to make. So you can never you can never build a site or a bot or or, a, or an app and then blame Copilot for it being poor. It's on you. So that is a key thing to remember. It's helping, but you're making the decisions. And um, and I like to see, and I like to see that it's uh, it's always prompting, but it, or you, you need to prompt it, and then gives you suggestions, and you need to go make the step to go forward. All right. So cool. we so there was what I loved this year was that. that Every product in a power platform got, got a little bit of love. And we see that there's announcements everywhere. And to start off uh, Power Virtual Agents, if there's anyone in the power platform that haven't given them much attention or love, it's me because I don't like bots and I think they're crap uh, and I haven't really worked with them as of, out of principle. So there's my soapbox. But then I have to rethink this because now it's, the reason why I've been so stern about this as well is I I think it's, I think I've talked about this before. This feels very familiar. It is um, a subject matter expertise as anything else. And I think that's the reason why bots don't work generally, because people don't take that seriously enough. It needs to be trained. You need to have the topics ready. You need to give it love and nurture it as you go along. You can just build a bot and release it out there and then think that it's going to work until now. And now I feel we're at that crossroads where now you can actually just wire it up and it will learn by talking to your customers or your internal users, however you want to use it. It will, you can point it to your website and it will index and read through and learn from the content that is there and being able to pull that together and give you a holistic and correct, accurate answer. And it will, and I just, this is where we need to be at because we're lazy. We're not going to do yep. all that work. Now PVA as a product finally caught up and we'll do that mundane, boring work that we were never, you know, interested in doing in the first place. <laughs> so I think yep. this, if anything, this is the best use of that applied AI that I've seen throughout our platform. I totally agree. It's yeah. I, I, yeah, I totally agree with the power virtual agents. It's definitely neat. This is this is finally the secret sauce or the gas on the fire that's really going to make PVA shine and really looking forward to that. Um, and of course, we can't have an episode go by without mentioning this other thing in the power platform power pages. Um, and it's it's interesting when there was the Microsoft business applications event where they announced all the co-pilot capabilities for power apps and power automate. Um, we've had friends reach out. Um, like I'm sure you're the same that reached out to us saying, Hey, is there, when is co-pilot coming to power pages? And, um, you know, I was sort of like kind of wink nudge. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> and now we have some new features that are beginning to, to light up. Um, specifically, it's going to be natural language to form, um, which basically means, you know, when you go to add a form to a page, um, instead of going into, you should, I've always said this before, you should define your data model before you build your site. I still maintain that. However, with this, you can go in and describe, hey, I want a form, I want an application form. Uh, I want a form to sign up for personal training services or whatever you want. You describe it, and then it will design your Dataverse, you know, table and fields and design that form for you. So this is something, it's still kind of single table at this point where, and this is why I maintain you should still work on your data model before building your site. But this is a pretty neat step. Again, it, you still need to know what you're doing and you still need to do some work, but it's going to help save you probably hundreds of clicks and move forwards and stuff because you can actually begin to build out this stuff. So that's pretty cool. The other one that's neat, uh, Copilot with Empower Pages, is the natural language to text. And this is where, you know, if you're designing a page and you're trying to decide what the title or the description, and, you know, I think a lot of times a lot of companies will actually have their marketing people put that copy together. But if you're building a proof of concept or a very simple site and you're not quite sure of the wording or something, the natural language to text will help you out. So give me a description of, you know, my personal training services or something like that. And then it will go and you can adjust and generate that text, you know, static content. Um, and then there's also, of course, we talked about PVA. That was something that was suspiciously absent when Power Pages, the new design studio was released last year. P 
people are like, hey, that's great. How can I add a chat bot? And I know that we've added guidance on how to do it sort of the back end way. But now it's once again brought to the forefront. So you can add a chat bot to your Power Pages pages. Uh, pretty straightforward there. And that ties into the new PVA announcements as well. And then, of course, with these chat bots, it's going to actually take a look at your website content. And um, but by doing that indexing, that indexing can take time. So there is a feature there that you can there's a top topic that will help you force that Bing index that will actually allow you to index your site. So, of course, in PVA can use it. And then that's on your pages. So people that are searching for information will be able to find that. Um, there's some other announcements, too, in terms of creating um, creating entire sites or sort of kind of pseudo templates kind of thing. I don't think that's that's been announced, but it hasn't been released yet um, in private preview. So still definitely more things to come in Power Pages for co-pilots. Um, so yeah, so that that covers um, our purple, the right. purple one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say, you know, in terms of forms, and that is, you've had more of an experience with this than me in training. That is the thing that people struggle most with to understand that you need a portal form and then you need a database form and then you need to tie that to your data model to have that being able you have that ability to create that form just in natural language from the power pages. And then you never think about you never see you never touch on the forms that are behind the scenes until you go back and you go into the, the model driven app and you see that on the back end that can probably be, you know, getting people that are new to power pages into the, you know, the, the, the makings of it and being an enabler more than anything. And in terms of proof of concepts, I think that is what it, what the natural language to text is about as well. Developers will put in lorem ipsum all, all over the place. Now you don't need to. Now Copilot can give you something that is closer to what the end product will look like and, and it will be more realistic for people to just tweak rather than to, to replace the lorem ipsum text. And I, I can't wait to see what's coming next for Power Pages. I know that there's a lot of, I saw in one of the announcements, there was a description about something to do with images, something to do with styling. Oh, yeah. So I know that there's something in the works that are coming. So I, I believe we'll see more and more of that later. And stay, stay tuned <laughs> to the Power Platform Boost podcast for information and updates. Definitely. Oh, you should have your own uh what is it? Not a jingle, but you know, that segment sound thing for that. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there, uh, let's move on. Power yep. Automate. The ability to create a, a flow, a cloud flow yep. using natural language. We've had that for a little while already. And I, I yep. actually love it. I think it's to the point and I've, I, I've, uh, played around with it somewhat, and I, I think that's great. And actually, when I do demos, the last uh, last couple of times I've done demos as well, I, that is something that I've shown to people, and they're excited about that. So I uh, really think that's cool. Um, yeah, and this is this. You know, we talked earlier about you know you still need to know what you're doing with co-pilots, and I think for Power Automate that still remains true. But what I like about the co-pilots in Power Automate, especially is you can take a look at what Copilot generated for you. And it's the same using Copilot in Visual Studio Code. And you can take a look at that and go in, oh, I never, wouldn't have thought to do it that way. Now I've learned something. So Copilot can be a teacher as well. So then the next time you build a flow, of course, you're probably still using the Copilot, but then you have a little bit better. It sort of helps you get creative with your prompting and your... your um, your your just your own personal knowledge as well. So, yeah, it's much as it much as sounded like I was kind of poo pooing co pilots earlier. I'm not. It's it's a it's, it can be they're here to help, but also it gives you the ability to learn some new things as well. Yep, absolutely agree. And I think it, the yeah the user interface as well. The they call they're calling it the new designer. Um, not really sure. The new Cloudflow designer. Not really sure what that entails, but I think you have the the right side pane as well with the co-pilot for Power Automate, where you can make it, you know, let it uh, allow it to make changes along the way. If you've forgotten something in the initial prompt, then you can add it and re or remove it. And, and as you say, you learn from what, what it's doing. Um, there are other news as well for Power Automate. So when we talk about Power Automate, we're usually talking about Cloudflows, but this product has a lot of other facets as well. 
and things that I don't really understand. But there are news um, in regards to action C SDKs for desktop flows, things that I really yep. don't get. So if you're into Power Automate de desktop or um, um, robotic uh, process uh, automation. Thank, thank you. Uh, <laughs> then there's other news. <laughs> Maybe you get these a little better than me. No, I think I, uh, yeah, with Power. Uh, I have been voluntold to work a little bit on Power Automate desktop. Um, so I am getting myself ramped up on a lot of these uh, particular features as well. So I think, again, just it's using co-pilots to enhance what people are already doing. Of course, Power Automate Desktop is, you know, this ability to kind of work with, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, legacy user interfaces that just don't have particular web APIs or also to, to interact or integrate with other solutions as well. So um, definitely, you know, Copilot can help well, you know what? It probably is going to help me learn this tool a lot better. So I'm keen to d exactly. dive into some of that. Yeah. Cool. Great. And then something that I was really excited about, being able to upload your Excel spreadsheet, the complex multi-page, multi-table thing. You know that Excel spreadsheet that that dude in IT or in finance made? And then being able to upload that into to you know, the Power Platform and Power Apps and having that app being built for you based on that complex model, that was something that really, really resonated with me. So that's one of my top picks, the Excel to Dataverse new feature in, in for Canvas apps. It's yeah, really, it's I, early days. Yeah, definitely early, definitely early days because right now it looks like it's a one table to Canvas app type situation. Um, but yeah, I look forward. I mean, I totally, I think if anybody has that massive, you know, the person, you know, person in finance that has that massive spreadsheet, um, if you dump that into, into this feature now, it's going to be, you might kind of run into roadblocks or it might be a little bit lacking, but keep an eye on this. This is going to evolve and this is really going to help get that mission critical data into proper applications um, over time. But again, I would say this would be like every, with all of these in preview, you know, be patient with it. And if you run into a roadblock, there are, there are links to provide feedback. Definitely provide that feedback. I know the team reads through that um, because oh, yeah. I hear about it and I see that feedback um, <laughs> and it's very honest. <laughs> let's, let's just put it that sometimes. So, and then the, the PMs will take that to heart and try their best to improve. But of course, a lot of times we're, you know, the PMs are fully aware of, what the needs are and it's on the roadmap already. We just got to be patient to see these things roll out. But at least Microsoft is allowing us to, to, to try this out now in early days to be able to, to try different things and provide that feedback. So very collaborative yeah. effort on that. And it is all about that feedback as well. And I've had discussions with the team where they, um, where they tell me that, yeah, we saw your feedback on this a couple of years ago. And that's really, so that has come back around for me. It's like, yeah, we've, uh, we've, yeah, we've read through that. We had that up on the agenda, your feedback. And, uh, and I like to see that because, yeah, I think with other products, we're not used to the, our feedback being heard. And you think, oh, Microsoft's just a massive organization. That little feedback that I give is going to just be lost in a big void of everything. No, it's not it's coming into someone's desk and it's actually being being read through and it's the more people that give the same feedback as well has to do with the priority of the features so if you have feedback or if you're coming across something you know take that couple of minutes to give that feedback it is valuable and that is the reason why we have these features in preview and i would rather have all of these preview features being you know, not perfect, but in the making and being able to give that feedback instead of getting something that is polished and ready and, you know, complete and being the wrong thing. Yep. Totally so agree. This is, yeah, absolutely. So give that and, feedback people. Yeah. And your feedback, chances are there's other people that have the same feedback. So the more voices that are added to that, just help move that along. And then of course there's ideas and I know I've heard criticism. Well, well, my, you know, my, that idea has been sitting there for three years and it's got like, you know, a hundred votes. 
or plus whatever true but these things do come around and there are priorities and, and things there's a lot going into it but don't you know like i said sometimes you have to be a bit patient um for bootstrap five was one that was on the idea site for quite a few years it's coming it is in it is on the roadmap now or you know and it's there will be showing up soon um in preview so again these are the types of things that keep keep pushing <laughs> you'll get there yeah so and it wasn't yeah. all co-pilot there's other stuff um well this is this well, is a bit of a transition AI. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's not co-pilot but it's ai much yeah so i uh microsoft fabric when i first heard that i was like what the heck is that i had no idea and and i still i know very little about this, but I'm getting the the gist of it. So I kind of read through some of these documentation on Microsoft Fabric. It does tie into, you know, there is Copilot and Power BI, which taps into this as well. So my understanding of it, and I hope I got it right, is it's a suite of tools to help you with your data analytics, um, a whole bunch of different tools to bring in different data sources from different applications and different databases, bring these into a one lake, um, and it's not that it's just going to, again, do it for you automatically. It's going to provide you the tools. What really stood out for me, and as I look through these, there is a whole bunch of different tools for different purposes. Ones to gather the data, other tools to model the data, other tools to structure the data a certain way. Um, you still need your subject matter experts that are you know, well aware of how these things work and how they go together. But what really stood out for me was the ability, a lot of these tools would take care of a lot of that Azure um, backend stuff that before, if you had to set up, for instance, if you have to set up an SQL server, well, you need to make sure you have a storage account. You need to make sure you have certain capacities. You need to make sure you have this subscription tied to this. And there's a lot of extra steps when you're setting up something in Azure. It goes even beyond databases. Um, um, Authentication is another one where you have to go through it and set up a lot of things. What I liked about this Microsoft Fabric is a lot of these tools would do some of that backend work for you, setting up a lot of those services so the data specialist could focus on the job at hand. This is the tool I want. This is what I want to do with it. And then those services will be set up. And then, of course, that whole process of getting all that data in the data lake and everything like that, and then eventually to analytic tools, for instance, like Power BI with the Copilot and Power BI, now you're able to go through your corporate data and be able to build some very meaningful reports very easily or a lot easy, easier, again, using the Copilots on this. So that uh, yeah. that is my 10 to 15 second overview of probably what should be 15 hours of content around Microsoft Fabric. Yeah, great. Uh, it was not 15 minutes, and now I think we're getting to the, just to the problem with our time management. But sure, yeah, let's call that 15 minutes, seconds. And then, uh, yeah, no, but I, I look at it differently as well, because I think this is the platform that Power BI always needed. And it's low code as well. And it's, so I'm, I, I, I haven't really, we didn't discuss this earlier, but to me, this is moving Power BI out of the Power platform. Yep. It's just, I, I don't, this is completely my my imagination running wild. It's the platform that Power BI always needed. And it's a low code way of getting your complete picture, complete overview, get everything together in one place as, yeah, no, I think it's, it's the start. It's the beginning of something new. And Satya Nadella talks about it as, you know, a, a, another fork in the road. This is so big. This is something they've worked on for four years. It's a huge announcement. And that tells me that there's more to come. This is just a start. And we'll see. So I think this will change some of the, again, <laughs> the world as we know it from a Power Platform yep. point of view. And to be honest, Power BI has always been the oddball, you know, oddball out. And we're so happy to have had Power BI in the Power Platform for so long because it has a, such a huge community. We talked about this in the podcast before, but it, it has also always been something that most of us, if you work with Power BI, you work with Power BI done. You don't go, you don't tap into all the other products, whereas all the other product are very, products are very intertwined. So it makes sense. And, you know, in all 
this is just my imagination. I haven't read anything. I haven't seen anything. This is not my MVP. I, there's no information from Microsoft about this at all. This is just me, you know, letting my uh, imagination run wild. So, um, but yeah, let's see where this is going. I just love that idea and the way that it resonates. And now I'm talking with um, about Fabric, of course, Microsoft Fabric. The, if you look into social media and our community, the way that it resonates, it's amazing. I see everyone just lighting up. My, oh my God, this is the biggest thing from build. Uh, fabric is just mind boggling. This is going to change everything. So if you work in the data and, and the massive data, if that's your day to day job, I think this is going to, from what I can tell from the community's reaction to this, this is huge. And so, yeah, let's, uh, it's going to be very cool to watch that and see where that's going. Cool. And then the other thing uh, we're, you know, <laughs> trying trying to, again, keep an eye on time. Apparently it's my fault, but anyways. <laughs> Surprised? <laughs> uh, Power Platform Catalog. Um, so this was something, these are one of these other kind of, you know, announcements that kind of happen under the radar. But here, if you're in an organization, you're building a lot of connectors, building templates, building different apps, um, those types of things. Um, you don't necessarily have to work in a silo. To me, this is where you can put it as part of your catalog uh, within your organization. So other makers within your within your organization can utilize this. To me, this is, I would, maybe this is not the best description, but I would describe it as your internal, your internal app store or your internal gallery of components and pieces that you and your team can share um, as you're building out applications within your organization. Um, I haven't read a lot on this. I'm just wondering if this is something within partner organizations that deliver power platform services could utilize as well. Because I know when I've worked in larger consulting firms, um, sometimes we would build something and then we would hear in a meeting someone who's not involved in the project saying, oh, I built something similar for this other client. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, oh, well, we wish we would have known that. Um, so this is the type of thing I think is great to have that mechanism built in you know, in the power platform that we could utilize to begin to organize some of these things a little bit better um, and collaborate. Yeah. Absolutely. And from an adoption point of view as well, if you're in an organization and you're picking up our platform as a low coder and you have that catalog of approved apps, there, that's a great way to learn. Okay, so in this organization, we um, brand apps this way or we structure Power Automates this way to look at it as a, a template or a, um, a blueprint of how to build and how we're doing things in this organization kind of thing as well. So going as, a, you know, good examples of great apps kind of catalog as well. So um, and, and for people to pick apart and to learn how to how to build as well. Really yeah. excited about that. And also, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, something that I picked up under the radar is also, this is my uh, small detail pick, but I saw um, that now you'll be able to query data in Dataverse from Power Apps as you, in, in SQL queries or SQL queries. And for me, I never really, I never got it. You know, I was working, every time I work at Power Apps, I'm dependent on a developer to, to query that data and filter that data for me. I just it doesn't really never clicked, never clicked into place. But I know SQL or or SQL. So being able to query like I used to, you know, my <laughs> native language. It's oh, I can't wait for this. And this is so small. But when I saw it, I really just oh yeah, that really got me excited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I, thing. I didn't notice it until you told me about it. Like I know we had this SQL S the TDS endpoint for a while, but to because I have the same like I've struggled with the the querying language, trying to query data from Dataverse tables, like in building Power Apps, in like Canvas apps specifically. So if I can just, like, again, you kind of like, oh, just give me a, just let me do select blah, blah, blah from table. And then I'm happy. 
<laughs> Me yep. too. And I always have to go look through the documentation. And, you know, you're seeing it at customers and you're collaborating with someone else. And then they see you going into the documentation to read up on the, <laughs> the filtering. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know this. I, I Yeah, I, I really do know this. I just have to look it up every time. It feels so stupid. But this is going to be, yeah, now I'm going to get it, I hope. So I haven't really played with it yet. But I, uh, I love to see this light up in my tenant. I will definitely yep. do this for sure. All right, so a uh, time manager in the house. I'm uh, going to cut you off right there because we're on uh, 34 minutes already. I know you have a lot of things to talk about, but I also know that you have a plane to catch. Uh, so these yeah. were the, the news that we got uh, around to talking about from Build. Uh, so when this podcast episode is released, it will be a week from Build. Um, so we want to ask you, our, our audience, that to to Tell us about what your top feature from Build is and to add references. So we're going to, this is a new thing that we're going to do each time uh, for each episode. We're going to ask you in the podcast for, for um, feedback and we're going to post a poll. So we, our episode is released bi-weekly. So the week that we're not releasing an episode, we're going to release a, a community poll for you to answer. And the idea behind this is that we're going to ask you to you know, give us feedback on something or are we going to have that pull about something um, and actually help the community spread that as well. So uh, this week, yep. we're going to ask for your top tips about uh, or your top feature from Build so that we can share that with everyone else. And of course, yep. you you should uh, check out the show notes for links to the summary blog post, the book of news about, you know, Microsoft Fabric, everything that we talked about, all the all the releases, you'll be able to have or get links to directly uh, from from our uh, podcast site. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So and so now that I'm not allowed to talk about the other 26 things from Bill that I wanted to talk about today, um, we should dive into the events that are coming up because a couple weeks from now, we're going to be going to Dublin for the European Power Platform Conference. I'm so excited. Oh, me too. This is, uh, this is the one conference I'm really super excited for. Um, now, what we understand is the, the early bird pricing is gone. Um, still two-day tickets available. Now, I did see a tweet from Ella that they released a bunch of three-day tickets. They found, I guess they found some, I don't know, under a cupboard or something like that. There was only a handful, so I'm guessing they might be gone, but if you're lucky and you still want a three-day ticket, you might get lucky to get that. Of course, you still can use our promo code for a 10% off, so even though the early bird pricing is gone, uh, Boost, B-O-S-T, and the official announcement says, because we're friends with the European Power Platform Conference, so it's uh, next month is the European Power Platform Conference. If you're looking to power up your Microsoft Power Platform skills, then this is the place to do so. Hear from over 100 experts across 90 plus sessions as they deliver the latest insight on all things Microsoft Power Platform. Remember to use our special discount code BOOST for 10% off. And that way, also, if you uh, buy me a beer, I'll, get, I'll tell you all about the 26 other Microsoft build things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh, Maybe and you can speak stay and you can read through all and we can have that as an appendix. <laughs> like, uh, you know what? Maybe. This is, okay. This is <laughs> how about I do a fireside chat where I read the book of news, um, yeah. like a oh bedtime God, story cool. kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> so. And another conference coming up is Nordic Summit, where you and I are doing a doing a session. I know. Oh, I'm so excited That's... to see that come through. Oh, they had yeah. how many? How many submissions? Oh, over three hundred. And they were twenty five slots or something. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, we and, I mean, if get in. I know, a very uh, humbled and honored <laughs> oh, to yeah. be able to do it. So we're doing top 10, top 10 tips on power pages. So surprise, surprise. And, and we got to keep that one. We'll have to keep under 45 minutes as well. So that will be, okay. uh, we'll have to coordinate that. <laughs> that's okay, at Nordic summit though. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's, uh, and then I'm also doing, I'm doing a, a pre-day training at Nordic summit. It's uh, building powerful websites using power pages. Um, 
There's currently a Boost 40, B-O-O-S-T at 40 for a 40% discount. I'm not sure how long that lasts though. But the other thing though that I've offered is if you sign up for that pre-day workshop and if you're working on a Power Pages project or you you have other questions that go beyond the class, I'm willing to do a one hour session with you either before or after the training uh, on Teams or even if we can do it while we're there in Copenhagen. But that is a, that's a little extra bonus I'm throwing in for anybody that signs up for the class. So keep that in mind um, wow. because I, I charge a lot of money for these types oh, of sessions. Yeah. Can I bring mine <laughs> or do I still have to pay for the ones that we talked about earlier? I'll, I'll give you the friend discount. How's that sound? Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to bring two. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's for amazing. One special. And, and another, you know, to, to that as well. Um, the other conferences that I've been to, if you have an, a problem or a roadblock or anything, there's usually a, an expert booth or a P. You know, what, they have a name, don't they? The booth. They, bring they have the the medic album. the medics booth at the UG yeah. Summit. I've done that. Yeah, I have the lab coat. Like usually, <laughs> if I'm recording my office and you see that thing hanging on my door, that's my serum UG lab coat. So I'll wear that the next oh, episode. Is that so, what that is? I didn't. I didn't yeah. dare to ask. You just thought it was my <laughs> bathrobe hanging there. Yeah. And then, anyways or something else but yeah this is a family friendly podcast let's not go there we'll talk okay, about that after wrapping up. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah this is great there's so many things coming up um i'm excited about this week as well on wednesday i'm doing um a four hour workshop on power platform better together and uh, you know what? It's it's great to have that scheduled, you know, three, four months in advance. And then the week before, Microsoft launches a whole new suite of, of uh, co-pilots. It's, uh, yeah, so I haven't slept since Wednesday. And it's, uh, yeah, it's coming together pretty nice. So let's see. Uh, I was beginning to create blog posts and labs and then build happen. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, now I think we're down to one hour because you can only just, you know, ask Copilot to build the thing for us and then go to lunch. So we'll see. Yep, perfect. <laughs> right. So, um, and let's wrap this up. Uh, if you like yep. this episode, and I guess you did since you're still here, uh, please share it with your friends and colleagues and the people from the community. Sharing on social media goes a long way, but also... Uh, ratings and review in the different apps is also great for our discoverability so people can discover us better easily more easily uh and we love hearing your feedback so if there's anything that crosses your mind during one of those episodes please reach out there you can reach us everywhere we're, we're up to scratch and we, we respond everywhere so um please let us know we're here for you so if you have any feedback then please please provide that um and yeah, be, make sure to, to subscribe on the different um, po pl places where you listen to podcasts. So you don't miss an episode. And thank you so much uh, for being with us each bi-weekly episode. Um, and and buy, us a, buy us a coffee as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Neil Benson, who, yeah. who put some money, oh. money in the jar. So thanks, Neil. Really appreciate that. And we promise we will give you your uh, power, uh, the sticker our and podcast <laughs> sticker and hug. And we still, we still owe him a, uh, a podcast promo video as well that we need to send to him. Oh yeah. No, that's I was going to do that. I'm sorry. Completely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, sure. We will. Right. And thank you so much for listening, everyone, to the Power Platform Boost podcast with your hosts, Ulrike Ackerbeck and Nick Dolman. We'll see you next time for your timely boost of Power Platform News.